Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Welcome to Knuckleheads of Liberty Podcast, formerly Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. <clears throat> my name is Jason McPhee. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. And let me introduce you to our panelists. Up in our upper left-hand corner, we have our screaming ghoul of freedom, Tim Everett. Uh, pilot in the state of California. And in our upper right-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in liberty, a retired engineer in the state of California. So today's show, uh, we're coming at you on January 29th, 2021. This is a part three in a series we've been doing on what is peaceful protesting. Um, As we talked about in the last two episodes, we've been through about a year of kind of just just uh, uh, beyond the pale protesting, um, you know, all sorts of things. Uh, it, it's just really beyond imagination where we have been at for this last year. And we've been told the whole time that most of this is peaceful up until the point when the Capitol building was stormed. <laughs> and suddenly the news decided it wasn't peaceful anymore. But, um, <clears throat> but at that point, uh, it, we think it might be really instructive to have a conversation on this show about what is peaceful protesting, because there seems to be a lot of confusion. And so in our last couple episodes, we've gone over some points, had some really good discussion about it. And we are going to continue with that today. Uh, we have a few more uh, issues to get in on that. So, um, let me go to but before, before before you start sharing. I just want to say I don't think there's a lot of confusion about what is a peaceful protest. I think the idiots on the left want to create a lot of confusion about what a peaceful protest should be. So you can continue. Okay. <laughs> so we are pulling up the slides, and this was an example that we started with in our first episode on this. Uh, and clearly a peaceful protest. I don't think anybody would argue with this. It may not be peaceful on the government side, but it certainly is peaceful on the protesters. Side. Sure. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, a bunch of people walking with signs saying, I am a man and the government pointing guns at them while they're doing it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So uh, th- that is uh, kind of an example. So we, we went through several other examples and had some discussion about um different issues about blocking freeways, about people screaming in other people's face, throwing paint, uh, you know, just up to the point of harassing, uh, you know, blocking people's uh, way while carrying a gun at the same time, you know, just uh, all kinds of stuff. And up to the point of even defending your own property to a crowd outside. So we kind of went through all those issues. Um, And so now I think it might be worthwhile just to jump into what does the Constitution say before we go any farther, just so we're all sort of on the same page? So what the Con- uh, Constitution says, the uh, First Amendment in our Bill of Rights says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting free speech, or excuse me, free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people <coughs> or, uh, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. And so that last part really starts to get to the heart of what we're talking about here. Um, so before we jump on to any more of them, you guys want to uh, give any more insights on on this amendment or what you think it means? Um, well, just, well to, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, Tim, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just going to mention, it, you know, it's, it's pretty plain. Um, it's talking about peaceably to assemble. So... Uh, it's not, uh, you know, peaceably, uh, <laughs> if if the definition is looked up, I mean, is is without violence. So it has nothing to do with burning buildings and, you know, hurting people, uh, uh, you know, getting in people's faces and stuff like that. that you know, it's just, it, we're talking peaceably here. So uh, that's, that's all I want to point out, just the, the key word to the whole thing. Um, assembly thing and 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 this is this is absolutely correct what 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 tim is is saying but and but the the whole idea about this and i i made this point a little while ago is that the left now wants to want to confuse us about what peaceful assembly mean because 
Chris Como told us, you know, in his in his eloquence, where does it say that protests have to be peaceful? This is what the left is trying to do. They try to take words that we have no, we have meanings, we have some meaning of, and try to change its meaning so to fit their narrative to justify all the mm -hmm. ridiculous things that they want us to accept. Lawlessness and everything else. They want us to accept these things. So lawlessness is okay if it's being done in the name of racial justice. But lawlessness is wrong if it's being done when people invade the capital and protesting and protesting and rioting because of the election results. So they want to define these words. They want to redefine words that we have no meanings of, and they think that we should accept it. And this is what we should always fight against. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing I can't help but notice as well is that this... Uh, um, misread by Chris Cuomo on the uh, <laughs> CNN broadcast uh, was not canceled. You know, they, uh, the big tech right. guys did not pull that down <laughs> when he said, hey, who says this has to be peaceful? <laughs> yes. Yes. So, now, somehow, you know, everybody else was uh, getting canceled left and right. But, you know, that's uh, that's that's pretty cool when they're tearing up uh, people's private property and, and burning businesses and everything else. <laughs> And, hey, and, and the, greatest, the greatest, the greatest, um, the greatest irony about about this and uh, concern where um, Chris Cuomo is concerned, Chris Cuomo's father and his brother currently, Chris Cuomo's father previously and his current and his brother um, and his brother presently, is the chief executive officer, the chief law enforcement officer in the state of New York. Okay, his brother is and his father was, and this man's still gonna get on TV, going on national TV and say, where does it say, where does it say that protests have to be peaceful? God help us. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> let's jump into to our next issue on this subject. So as we talked about before, peaceful protesting, well, you know, uh, I guess what about when people are, are essentially destroying property? In this case, what we're looking at is a, uh, this was during the middle of the summer, uh, I think it was in June of 2020, and uh, protesters were had at that point they'd fixated on tearing down uh, Civil War statues, but not just Civil War statues. It, it evolved into all kinds of other statues, but Civil War statues began as sort of the crux of this whole thing. In this particular image, I can't remember exactly where it was in the country, but they were pulling down a statue, and you can see in this uh, uh, bottom of the corner here is a guy who's just about to be squashed by this statue that's falling down. So this was um, a, a something that I, I don't remember if the media described it as a peaceful protest, but they certainly didn't describe it as a violent riot. <laughs> <laughs> and in the end, this this gentleman wound up with coma. He would now he was part of the crowd here that was protesting. So you know he put himself in this position here. But you know these people are destroying public property at the same time injuring people. And, and by the way, there was a city council woman, I believe, who was helping to lead this. And yes. there was a lot of uh, crazy stuff afterwards where the police tried to charge that person. And then the police chief, I think, was dismissed. So, yes. uh, but uh, forced, to, forced to resign. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. So anyways, you guys have any thoughts about this? Uh, to me, this is not peaceful protesting, but uh, what are your guys thoughts? Go ahead, Leon. Well, well, this this goes back to the complete distortions that we are seeing in our lives now. Okay, so this this now these statues are being pulled down they, they, because in the name of racial justice, in the name of correcting correcting the ills of the past. I always want to know when these people are doing their peaceful protests and destroying public property, who are the angels they're going to replace these things these statues with? They want us to accept their angels, but they don't want to accept our whatever we have chosen, what we have collectively chosen to highlight, whether it's Robert E. Lee or whether it's Abraham Lincoln or whoever. This is our expression of our history, okay? It's freedom of speech. Call it collective freedom of speech if you wish. They have the right to destroy it unless our elected officials say it's time to take it down, okay? And they have the right to do this. But still they think they have a right. Still they think that they are good enough they are wise enough, they are moral enough to tell us which angels we should accept and which we should not. This is not peaceful protest in any shape, any way, shape, or form. This is the destruction of our way of life, of our moral values, all of which came from Western civilization. 
And it should say hard hats required. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, it's, it's it doesn't it's uh, even though it's not necessarily private property, it's public private uh, uh, public property. Yes. That they're that they're tearing down here. It's not their property. It's not theirs to dispose of or to do anything with. Uh, and if uh, you know, if there was a uh, a faith of the system, and they didn't like those statues, they could petition whatever government authority uh, put them up there to have them removed uh, or you know, what it replaced with something else or something, you know, but it, this isn't the way to go about doing it in a civilized society. And, um, you know, it's, you know, a moral civilized society uh, is required in order to have a free society. So probably the, the biggest uh, fear that I have watching things like this, uh, you know, isn't that I'm all bent out of shape over, uh, losing a statue or two, uh, well, or, or 200. Um, it, it's not, not that that is correct. It's not, I'm not saying it is, and they have no right to do it. I'm just saying that, uh, you know, if, if this, it, it's this kind of behavior that begets a more authoritarian government response to try to quell, even, even when it's in, you know, maybe in favor of the left in this case, or in the case of uh, January 6th, where supposedly it was a, something that came from the right, then um, assuming it did, then both of these things just increase government's reaction toward, an, uh, toward um, tyranny and despotism. And that's, you know, that's the, the worst thing. And so again, you know, this isn't the right way to protest. The right way is to petition the government for a redress of the grievance they may have exactly. regarding that statue and to assemble peaceably in order to make that happen. Okay, so, you know, we're, we're, these are degenerates, these, all these people, every one of them in this picture is a degenerate. Uh, and they uh, have, um, no clue as to what a well-run, you know, a, a free society requires. A free society really requires morality and restraint and uh, civility and manners and so on and so forth. So, you know, and sometimes what happens is a little karma comes up and bites the guy in the picture with the circle around his head and he gets into a coma because the statues pulled down over the top of him. But, you know, he's just getting his just rewards for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, but that said, everybody in this picture is just decrepit, morally decrepit, in my opinion. Well, you know, I, I, I can't help. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go, go ahead, Leon. Uh, I, I was just going to ask you, could you just scroll back to the First Amendment, please? The one of the First Amendment. And this is what, I mean, Tim, Tim made his point. And it says at the end there, and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. This is Tim's point. It's right there in the First Amendment. So if we have a problem with the statue, as Tim Wright really point, pointed out, we have a problem with the statue, let's protest, let's get, 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 um, petition our government, and let's have the statue removed if they so choose to do so. Instead of them doing this sort of thing, and look at what happened, the guy ended up probably half dead, I don't know. I don't know if he got out of his coma. Instead of this degenerate action that serves no one. Well, one thing I can't help but notice too, both in the this case and in the case of the Capitol building, um, you know, both of these were issues where essentially, uh, you know, government property was defaced in, in some manner, and yes. uh, in in these were, you know, uh, essentially monuments. Uh, that were put up, but it, it brings up the issue of, you know, the, the more government decides to get in our lives, the more it, it, it can be an affront to people to the point where they get very angry. And, uh, you know, in this case, there's people who were tired of looking at, you know, civil war officers who they thought were 
perpetrating slavery, which was offensive to them. And I, I can see how, you know, you might be angry that why is government forcing me to look at this stuff every day? You know, why am I, I looking at this as I walk through a park every day, you know, if I don't want to look at it. And by the same token, what happened at the Capitol? I, you know, the lawmakers there had just been through putting people essentially in confinement for almost a year. You know, so I mean, people were pretty upset and then they thought they had the election stolen from them, whether that was a, a just read or not of things is aside from the point. But but the issue is the bigger the government gets into your life, the the, the more impact it's going to have on, you know, when people are pushing their preferences on you, it's it's going to it's going to rub a lot of people the wrong way. So maybe just as a libertarian point, maybe if we, if we shrink government a little bit, maybe people won't have to, you know, really get up upset about what government's doing quite as much. I don't know. Just, just a thought. I'm going, I'm going to depart from you here a little bit, Jason, because this, this starts a little slippery slope justification here that, that I'm not comfortable with. Okay. True. We want to shrink government. I think we all, we all, we all on the same page on that. Okay, but actions like statues, which we put up, it is done by our elected leaders. And mm -hmm. if there's something that you find offensive, okay, fine. Maybe let's suppose um, somebody, someone, a descendant of slave, whatever, will walk through a park and have to look at a statue of somebody who was a slave owner or whatever, and they find that so God, oh Lord, so offensive. I don't know why. There is a process that yeah. is in place for them to try to have that statue removed. Democracy requires us to accept things that we like and to accept things that we don't like. Like right now, there's a man sitting in the White House who I cannot imagine why he should be there. But I have to accept it. I'm not sure if he can imagine why he's there either. Yeah, very true. <laughs> very true. Very true. But I have to accept it. Because the Electoral College says that he was elected president. But there are times we have to accept these things. And whenever we can, whenever there's an opportunity, we can change it. So, yeah, in yeah. so, so certainly I agree with you. I mean, that, uh, you know, as far as the process goes, you know, we, we, we all have a stake in that statue. And it, just because I want to do one thing to it doesn't mean that I just get to do it because it's part of the commons. You know, I, that's, right. I guess from a libertarian perspective, it's just, you know, why don't we just shrink the commons a little more and we won't run into as many of these problems. <laughs> so, right. yeah. And I could accept that logic. Yeah. I could accept that logic. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure that uh, shrinking the government would uh, eliminate the uh, monuments that for some reason humans all throughout a long time that I can remember. Uh, think about Roman history, Greek history, and statues therein. Okay, as I, I went to Rome in Italy, and I'm telling you what, you want to see a bunch of statues. There's a bazillion of them all over the place. Okay, so statues apparently are a, a thing that humans love to do. Uh, and uh, they, they make statues to all kinds of, of people, and, uh, and some uh, made up beings and so on, like angels and so on. But <clears throat> again, uh, if, if you shrunk government, I'm not sure you would shrink the number of statues too much. You well, might. I, I, but yeah, to, to push I'm not on sure that, that they go hand in hand. Well, I, I think, though, that we have a, a gazillion statues of Jesus and Mary and other things, and they're all in churches. And I don't see people running through you know, this private property, tearing those statues down the way they are, these things that are in public property in the middle of the, uh, you know, parks and such. So I think there, that that distinction between private and public is, is in, at least in my mind, it's a big difference. And like I said, we don't seem to have the problem with people running through churches and, and tearing those statues down. <laughs> Give them time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I may have let the cat out of the bag. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, the low-hanging fruit sits outside in front of a courthouse, but the, the difficult stuff is in the church, okay? But give them time, all right? It's, they didn't have to go through a doorway to get into the, you know, to, to the, this statue in the picture. Um, but, uh, okay, um, let's shrink government. So uh, I, I'm a little miffed about uh, the um, Federal Reserve shrinking the value of, of every dollar. I'm a little miffed that 
the dollar is, uh, or rather the interest rates are manipulated by the Federal Reserve. And that is the price of money, which is 50% of every exchange. I mean, that's a huge amount of influence that trumps the heck out of your, your statute influence. So we want to shrink government, you know, shouldn't they be, if these boneheads had, had an ounce of intelligence, which they don't, but so they all flunked history. Um, but if they did, then they would, um, they would march on the Federal Reserve and tear the Federal Reserve down. Okay, they start try to burn that down. Okay, how about that? Now yeah. maybe then we can start uh, seeing the the exorbitant um, and massive influence that government has now on fifty percent of every single exchange we go into, except maybe you know when you're well. No, it's even you can't even buy some some dope on the street without you know cash well that's 50 percent right there is it all comes from the federal reserve so so um you know there you go there's yep. one example but, but what I do we do we, we have to we can't just go around it's not going to help nor is it going to help tearing down that statue it's not going to get rid of the history behind the statue any more than attacking the federal reserve would would prevent the federal reserve from continuing to um to uh, value the price of money so uh you know it takes a lot more than that it's a lot yeah. harder it's you know tearing we, we, down we, things we, is we, easy. We, we, yeah we can't burn down the printing presses because they're electronic but let me jump exactly. into the next slide so <laughs> yeah. okay so, yes. so this this really hammers down the point of private and public because before we were talking about public property and we were a little bit shifting to private so here we see uh essentially fires burning uh in the background of uh, cnn telling us assuring us that these are fiery but mostly peaceful protests this is i believe is in kenosha i think well, and <laughs> Yeah. And so here we have the CNN uh, reporter uh, just sort of dogmatically assuring us that you know, this is this is kind of peaceful. <laughs> he's getting ready to roast some marshmallows. He looks like he's in camping gear, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wish he would interview the, the poor dumb guy that owned the business behind him that's being burned to the ground. I wish yes. he interview that guy. Yeah. And, and, tell, and tell him, don't don't worry. Don't That's worry, mostly. it was fiery. It was fiery, but it was mostly peaceful. Don't worry about yeah. it. Don't worry I know about you lost. It. I, I yes. know you lost everything that you've worked yes. for the last thirty years, but uh, it's mostly peaceful. Mostly you peaceful. Know, give us a break. Yeah. But you know the thing. The thing that is so immoral about these these before before we we, we jump away from the statues. The thing that is so immoral about this thing is that these people selectively choose which morality they want us to accept. Okay, you want to pull down the statues of the slave owners. You want to pull down the statues of the people who are heavily involved in Jim Crow. Well, what about the Democratic Party? They were all involved in Jim Crow. They were all of it. So you don't pull down anything that represents the Democratic Party. Don't you stop voting for them? If you're well, going to go by, if you're going to have your judgment, if you're going to tell your morality is so superior to the rest of us. To be, to be honest, though, uh, Leon, those were statues of Democrats they were pulling down. Exactly. <laughs> well, then, well, then finish the job. Finish the job. Okay? Go after the rest of the people who these people were associated with and continue to be associated with. If you want, if you want, to, be, if you want to be so moral to tell us that your morality is, is, is better than the rest of ours. Yeah. You know, uh, just to uh, uh, move us on to the next one. Now, this this kind of really demonstrates the gaslighting that we got this last year. And there were other, you know, uh, incidents, too, of reporters literally telling us it was peaceful. Well, I remember there was one CNN thing where the CNN building was literally being attacked in Atlanta by protesters. And and uh, there was a police line inside and they had broken the glass and they were lobbing things in and the police were trying to hold them. And a reporter was uh, standing there and Chris Cuomo was uh, narrating in the background and and uh, it looked like some kind of a M80 or, uh, you know, something was thrown in a, a essentially part of a stick of dynamite and it blows up near the police officers. And and uh, Chris Cuomo says, you know, wow. And it looks like they're throwing firecrackers. <laughs> Police officer said that was no firecracker. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so, I mean, they, they're just, you know, it's just gaslighting to the nth degree. But, you know, you know, we had this uh, uh, coming to us as well in Sacramento. This is a uh, poster that was put up on Antifa's webpage, Antifa Sacramento. I guess they have, uh, you know, webpages everywhere. And this is how they advertise for their protest. You know, uh, solidarity with Kenosha, mask up, wear black, no logos, bring friends, don't snitch, no good cops, no peace police, no peace police. Yes. So, and yet we were told these were peaceful protests. Of so, course. Of course. Is that missing a comma, comma behind peace? No peace. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think they were really just telling them they don't want anybody showing up. Saying, you know, hey, let's let's take it easy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But these are the types of things that led to, and here we go, the Chaz, the chop zone in Seattle, where literally they surrendered six blocks to protesters. So the government yeah. literally gave up. And people had businesses here, people who pay taxes to the government. The government just said, Hey, this is the summer of love, <laughs> and we're letting these people with guns take over your six blocks. You guys have any between, thoughts between, between 1861 and 1865? Abraham Lincoln prosecuted a whole war to save the Union. Okay, a lot of people died 600,000 people, 600,000 of our fellow Americans mm -hmm. died in that war. And today in America, we have city officials just allowing people to walk up and say, This is our independent zone. We are going to succeed. We're going to set up our own little state, our little city, our little independent zone, and nobody does anything about it. We mm -hmm. just sit by and watch until somebody die, until some little news turn out not mm -hmm. to be too good. Then we'll say, oh, maybe it's not a good idea. Yeah, and quite a few people were shot within this Chaz zone by yes. the people who delegated themselves as the police of this zone. So. Tell me this thing. Yeah. Oh God! Well, you know Lord we are. <laughs> we are getting close to the end. Unfortunately, this uh, this topic is so deep; it just takes us so far. But I wanted to leave you with essentially what 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 is a peaceful protest and the icon of peaceful protesting, Martin Luther King Jr. And you know, this is what he said part of what part of his speech when he accepted the Nobel Peace Prize it says nonviolence is the. Uh, is the answer to the crucial political and moral question of our time, the need for mankind to overcome oppression and violence without resorting to oppression and violence. Exactly. So, exactly. You know, yeah. maybe, maybe CNN can put this up on there. <laughs> <laughs> I think Martin Luther King was saying we can disrupt lives by protesting peacefully, but we cannot be violent or oppressive in our nature in, t in trying to overthrow the violence and oppression that is being displayed upon us. And that is what I think is a message here. We cannot use violence to overcome violence. We cannot use oppression to overcome oppression. And we are close to the end of time. I So i sorry, I think we're going to have to leave it there, but that'll have to be the last word. But thanks so much for joining us on this topic.